Um, Scott Kirk says, uh, Arteta is the man before the man. His inability to adapt and man management will see Saliba and Saka walk. He's brought some excitement back, but he will not get us over the line. Now, that's not a wild opinion to have. That's not a wild take to have. I think that Mikel Arteta has done enough to deserve the opportunity to, um, to, to have a good crack at it. And he's done enough to deserve the opportunity to take this team, hopefully, further. But that's not a wild opinion to have. Like again, I got I mentioned it earlier on on the episode. We talked about opinions not always needing to be sort of mutually exclusive. So to say that Arteta has done a really good job so far, but that he can't get us over the line in terms of winning a Premier League or winning a Champions League is a perfectly okay view to have. You know that that's a view that in time might be, you know, might be proven. And I've got no issue with people holding that opinion. Where I have an issue is with people who try to discredit the work he's done so far. I think the work he's done so far has been really, really good, really, really positive. And I'm hoping um, that we can take that next step and we can move on. Um, you know, man management, I, I just think that he doesn't take any shit from people. I think that there are some players whose attitudes are spot on, the, the type of attitude that Mikel Arteta likes. And there are players whose attitudes leave a lot to be desired. And, and Mikel Arteta hasn't got time to put up with that nonsense, um, you know, in the job that he's doing. Every manager has his favourites. Every manager has players that he gravitates towards, that he takes under his wing, that he pulls in alongside him. And every manager has players that they just don't fancy from the minute they walk in the door. That's the reality um, of it. So I think it's harsh to say that his man management has been bad. I think with, with Bukayo Saka, although Unai Emery gave him his debut, under Mikel Arteta, he's gone on to become a much better player. So you have to give Arteta some credit there. Um, you know, William Saliba. Yeah, OK. It was a bit shaky at the beginning, his relationship with Mikel Arteta. He was upset that he wasn't included in the plans. He was upset that he was sent out on loan again. But when he came back, when he came back, look at the player that he was and, and look at the player that he's continuing to develop into. And again... Maybe you should look at that through a slightly different lens. And rather than saying Arteta got it wrong with Saliba, maybe you should say, actually, Arteta was right to recognise that he could do with another year away playing regularly. And Arteta was right to predict that that extra year would elevate his game to a whole new level to a point where we're now talking about him as one of the best centre-backs in the league. And maybe in years to come, we're going to be talking about him as one of the best centre-backs in the world. In fact, some people will tell you he's that now. So the, the idea of Arteta being the man before the man is not a wild take at all. And, and while I think that he's done enough to deserve the opportunity to prove that he can be the man and not just the man before the man um, for now, you know, I, I don't think that's a wild take, Scott. And I think it's a very, very valid point and a, and a good argument to make. Um, you know, I might be saying the same thing in a year's time, in two years' time, you know. Um, Scott also goes on to say, I just want success for the club. I've followed for 40 years again. I think he has had a good go of it. Um, I think that whatever happens this season, um, no, let me rephrase that. I don't think whatever happens this season, he should be given next season. If we completely crash and burn, then I think conversations need to be had. But I think that because of the point in the season that we're at, at the time of recording this, it's really unfair to be calling for his head now it's not as if the season has completely gone to crap, right? We're we're still in the Champions League. We've got a draw um, in the round of 16 that I think we're all quite happy with. I'm not saying it's going to be easy. It's never easy in the Champions League. But it's a game that I think we're all confident Arsenal can win. Uh, and then all of a sudden you're in the last eight of Europe's Premier competition. We're still within touching distance um, of the, the, the top of the Premier League. And as I said, if we can win um, our next couple of games, Palace and Forest, both winnable fixtures. Again, not saying they're going to be easy, but they're winnable fixtures on paper at least. And then you can beat Liverpool at Emirates Stadium, which we should have done in the Cup a couple of weeks ago. And all of a sudden, the outlook when it comes to the Premier League title race is very different again as well. So I just think it's unfair to be, you know, saying, well, no, I'm done with him now. He's definitely not the man. And there's no point in persisting with that. I think it's a really, really harsh um, opinion to have. And it's an opinion that I think in a lot of people has has developed further over the course of the last two weeks because the transfer window's open. A lot of us feel that we could really do with some reinforcements 
yet we're not actually seeing that um, because of our issue with the profit and sustainability rules. So that frustration added to the bad run of results that we've been on, I think has got people into a position where maybe they're panicking a little bit prematurely about what the rest of this season is going to bring. I'm one of those people that likes to look at it glass half full. I like to look at the positives. We're only five points off the top of the Premier League. We're in the last eight of the Champions League. Now, I've realised that you can flip it the other way. You know, we were top at Christmas. Now look at where we are. Um, you know, we're we're not going to go to the latter stages of the Champions League. Why? Because we don't have the experience within this group to do that. And, and we're going to meet a, a giant in the next round, even if we do get through Porto. We haven't progressed in the FA Cup. We went out early in the League Cup. I understand why people would look at it glass half empty. I'm just trying to look at it glass half full because that's the way I like to do things. Um, but yeah, valid points, Scott. Valid points indeed. Thank you uh, for sending that comment in. Really, really appreciate it and hope you uh, have a great Tuesday, mate. Thank you.